Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of this little side series that I will be doing. In today's episode, I will be covering the purpose of data tables and how to properly use them. So what you are seeing on screen now is a data table system that I currently use for my in-development game, Reterra. This data table system holds all the information regarding the resource nodes in the game, whether that be the coal nodes in the world or the iron ore or any of the other ores and plants and things that you can harvest. So data tables are basically Excel spreadsheets that hold data for you to use anywhere within your code. And you can actually import Excel spreadsheets or Google Sheets directly into Unreal Engine data tables if you'd like. And I will actually make a video on that very soon. All right, so let's hop back over to my tutorial project where we will begin creating our own data table. All right, so now that we're over at the tutorial project, you will see that I have made a folder for data tables. This you know, may not be how you want to organize it, but just for this tutorial, I'm going to put them in a separate folder. And you will see if I just go straight up into miscellaneous, where right click miscellaneous data table, it's going to ask me to pick a row structure. So I haven't actually created a structure yet. So we need to create a structure for the data table. And basically what a structure is, it's a collection of variables that you can use, not just for data tables, they can be used for a lot of different things. And I'll cover some of that later in tutorials as well. But for this tutorial, we will be using structures strictly for the data tables. And that's one of their main usages. Um, so in order to create our structure, you're going to want to go to Blueprint and at the bottom you will see structure. I like to use the naming convention S underscore to name mine. I know some people like to use struct underscore, but I'm going to do S underscore and I'm going to do player name generator or we'll do a randomizer. And then I will double click on that struct go ahead and pin it up here. And you will see our collection of variables. So in order to add another one, I can click this add variable button up here like that. We are going to actually have just two for this tutorial. So the first one I'm going to call the name. And I'm going to make it a string. And the second one I'm going to make the H. And that's going to be an integer. And then if we head over to default values, we can actually set default variables for these. So name, I'm actually going to leave blank for the default, but age, I'm going to put at 18. If we go back to the structure and we go to tooltip, this tooltip right here will never be seen in the um, data table itself unless you're adding it as a, um, a secondary variable to the data table, um, which I will have some more advanced data table stuff later on covering all of that and how to you know really make them look nice and easy to edit. But the tooltips that you will want to change definitely are the ones if you click this little arrow here. So if you have multiple devs working or if you just are, you know, want to make sure that you don't forget, you can definitely set the tooltips up. So we're going to have this name tooltip be the name of the player. And I'm going to leave the age one blank just so you can see the difference. So we will hit save now and we have two variables in our structure ready to create a data table. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Go back into my content browser, hit right click, go to miscellaneous data table, and then I'm going to choose our S underscore player name randomizer. You can also search for it. There. Click OK. And then I like to use the naming convention DT underscore and then the same exact name as the struct. So player name randomizer. And then we can double click to open that. I'm going to pin it as well. And you will see all of our info. So we have the row names, which is a variable always attached to data tables. We have the name and the age, which is from our struct. And actually, if you go to data table details, you will see our row struct right here. So in order to add our first row, you just got to click this little add button up here. And you'll see our default variable of 18 for the age has saved. And also something you'll see is if I hover over age, nothing will come up. But if I hover over name, our little tooltip that we made earlier does pop up. Now, in order to change the row name, we have to actually click on it and you can double click or you can click on it and click F2 and we can rename it. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, the row name is actually not too important, but I can just rename it to show you what that is. So I'm going to rename it to row one. Then for row one, I can make the name be, uh, say, John, and we'll keep the age at 18. And then I can click duplicate 
It's like that. And actually, uh, I just thought about this. A smarter way to maybe do this would just be calling this row that. And then if we duplicate it, you have row zero. And then it'll keep going up from there. So for row zero, I am going to name this one Jack. And he is going to be 20 years old. This one I'm going to put as um, Billy. He is going to be 21. This one for, let's say, Paul. Going to be 25. And this last one we will put as Gerald. He is going to be 127. Now we have our rows and storing our names and our ages right here. So that's basically how a data table works. You can store data in here. Now you can also import, like I said earlier, Google Sheets or Excel spreadsheets, and I will make a tutorial on that later. But the you know the main purpose of data tables is to store this information and use it in your code. So what I'm gonna do now is show you just a basic way to use this in your code. And I'll have some more advanced stuff later down the line showing really how to get more into data tables and make them look nice. But the basics is this, and I'm going to now make a simple system that when we click play, it'll randomize our name and age. So if we go back to our third person map, go to content, and go into our player character. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend, you know, doing very much things in your in your player character to begin with. I much more um, enjoy putting it in the controller. But what I'm going to do here is just create a new function um, called randomize name. So randomize name is going to be our new function, and I'm going to do a function here called get data data table row names. What this is going to do is it's going to get all of the row names, which if you remember are all of these right here, row, row 0, 1, 1, 2, and 3, and give us an array of them. So now, in order to randomize it, I'm going to go out of this and do random array item, just like this. And then I will do another function, get data table row, just like that. We're going to drag this here. And then for the data table, select our data table. So now what we are doing is we are getting a random row name from the data table. So it's going to get one of these row names here. And then it's going to get the information from that row. And so what we can do now in order to set our name to that, and I'm just going to do a print string for now and not actually store anywhere. But what I can do is take this out row here, which is basically the information of the row our structure so you'll see here if i hover over it and do break it's going to say break s underscore player name randomizer which of course is that structure we made so we're going to go ahead and click on that and you'll see when i break it here i have the name and the age now available to me so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to just do here a simple print text drag that out just a little bit i'm going to do a format text very easy for, or uh, very useful for debugging in my opinion. I'm going to do your generated name is name. And then another one, your age is age. And now you'll see I can plug these variables in here. And so now that we have this function done right here, just to go over it one more time, we are getting the rows of the data table. We are getting a random row from the data table. And then we are getting the info from that random row. We are pulling that info from the individual row itself. We are formatting it into a debug message. And then we're going to go back to the event graph and on begin play before it casts. Which of course, it's not going to fail, but just in case it does, we're going to plug our randomized name function right there. Go ahead and compile and save. And if we go back to our map, you'll see if I click play and that your generated name is Paul and my age is 25. And if I click play again, same. There we go. Your generated name is John. Your age is 18. And if I keep clicking play, it'll randomize each time. Your generated name is Jack. Your age is 20. So that is the basics of data tables. 
this is a pretty simple tutorial and i'll have more data table type things um, in the future such as ex you know uh importing excel spreadsheets and google sheets into a data table in unreal and also just some more advanced um in-depth stuff like putting substructs and, and sub data table rows and things like that and it can get pretty advanced um but it's all once you understand the basics of a data table it all becomes really really simple actually so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have some more uh, uh suggestions for more tutorials hit me up in the comments let me know join the discord let me know there too and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching y'all have a good rest of your day